I have uh, taught, taught finance at Tulane for 23 years, and um, exactly a year ago, I had the best experience I've ever had. I brought 27 of my students to Omaha, Nebraska to spend the day with Warren Buffett. And uh, it was just amazing. In fact, I was so blown away. I do a lot of public speaking, so I meet a lot of famous people. But this guy really was just startling to me. In fact, for about two weeks after the trip, I did nothing but tell Warren Buffett stories. Uh, uh, so much to the fact that I had a friend that told me, oh, Peter, he's come down from the mountain, you know. And, um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we met Mr. Buffett, spent the whole day with him. And one of the first questions the students asked him is, and this is exactly a year ago, during the throes of the, of the difficulties in the financial markets, they said, Mr. Buffett, how bad is it on Wall Street right now? And he says, oh, it is terrible. I have never heard such sad stories as that's going on right now. He says, I heard a story last week where an investment banker leaves his big office in New York, goes to his home in Long Island, sees his wife there, and he says, honey, we got to talk. Uh, I'm not going to get a bonus this year, and I don't think I'm going to get a bonus next year. And, uh, and uh, I don't even know how to bring this up, but darling, you're going to have to learn to cook. And uh, <laughs> so we can get rid of the chef. And she says, well, OK, but you're going to have to learn to make love so we can get rid of the gardener. <laughs> so it's, um, so they, um, it was, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I fell madly in love with Mr. Buffett after this, by the way. The, um, it is, um, it's also great to be here because I love coming up to this neck of the woods. And uh, also the fact I, I teach college kids for a living, so it's just great to be with adults. It really is. You'll, you look super. You really do. There's, uh, they, uh, and I can relate to you better than I can my college students because we're about the same stage of life, same age. We're at that stage where the, the term pulling an all-nighter pretty much means sleeping through the evening without having to get up to pee. You know, so we're... Uh, so you're with me. This is going to work out. They, uh, there's, uh, although I, you know, I know I'm getting older, too, because I was, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching that TBS movie marathon where they had all the great movies back to back, and the movie The Graduate came out. And for the first time, Mrs. Robinson looked hot. You know, I, I, just, I just realized that that is, it's an interesting stage, you know, and uh, they, uh, <laughs> But I'm looking forward to getting older and moving to one of those retirement communities in Florida, you know, because, uh, you know, let's face it, the male-female ratio in these places is terrific. It really is. They, uh, I mean, <laughs> if you're a guy and you can drive at night, you're George Clooney. You know, it's, um, so it's, um, they, uh, this is going to work out. They, uh, <laughs> it's going to be like high school with money. It's, um, the, um, <laughs> And actually, we've lived in this environment before in college. You know, people living in close quarters, a lot of drugs. So, um, so the, um, this is, um, let's see. Where are we? Uh, there we go. <laughs> let's see. Don't take any of this too seriously. Uh, uh, I wanted to give you a little confidence in me, though. I wanted to show you a stock picking contest where I went against one of the top finance minds in this country, Mike Ditka, and um, was able to, to beat the coach. Uh, in fact, one of the strangest gigs I've ever had is for several years I was the investment instructor for the New Orleans Saints players, which was a real trip because these guys are like the poster boys for bad money management. You know, it's, uh, it is amazing. You know, you know, these stories you hear where the guy makes a couple million dollars a year and then five years later he's injured and, he's, and then five years after that they do a documentary that he's living under the overpass, destitute in a really large appliance box somewhere. And... Um, and you think, how can that happen? How can they blow this kind of money? Well, they can. These are particularly gifted young men. And so, um, so, the, so about 15 years ago, the NFL created a voluntary pension plan for the players. And it was a very nice deal. The uh, players put in $20,000 a year pre-tax, which is nothing. It's like what they spend on a meal. And then, um, then the NFL matched it with a free $20,000. And they went to a tax-deferred account with some good quality mutual funds. Well, they did that. And they looked around and they said, how's the plan going? Well, Every NFL team has 53 players, and on average, three players from each team participated. So, it was, uh, so year two is like, you know, we left out Bob? Education. That's what it was, education. So they, uh, they brought in a university prof for every city. I met the guy from the Lions and the Cowboys, and, and uh, we got that thing uh, going. Now, I want to talk a little bit about, um, let's see, here we go. I was hitting that little button, wasn't I? There we go. There's a, oh, by the way, I can't even use the joke I used to use, which is, why don't the Saints have a website? Because they've never been able to string three W's together. But it's, um, 
that is no longer true. We are unbelievably good now. So um, let's see. I want to talk about this economy, all right? The, uh, the fact is we're not entering another Great Depression. I know this is going to be a, a huge disappointment to the media, but uh, this, is, this is not what's happening. Uh, if you look at 1929 and the Depression that followed it, the government is embarking on a project 180 degrees from where that was. In other words, after the crash of 29, the government curtailed spending, they raised interest rates, they raised taxes, they raised tariffs. We're doing just the opposite. We are, interest rates are basically at zero, uh, unprecedented amounts of spending. The bottom line is whether or not you like uh, Ben Bernanke or you don't like Ben Bernanke, the truth of the matter is he is our nation's foremost scholar on the Great Depression. I've read his book on the essays of 29, and he knows that kind of thing. So I think we have to give him a little bit of credit here. By the way, I don't know who thought this was funny, but I checked in late last night, and you put me in room 1929. I don't know. That was a, just kind of a, it's kind of a nice t touch, uh, really. Um, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> there's a, now, a typical recession averages about 14 months in length. Now, this recession was a little bit longer. It was a little bit deeper. This recession ended in July. Now, the crack U.S. government economists won't tell you this until next spring, but it's, uh, it ended in July. Um, the interesting thing is if you listen to the media, you would think the average recession lasted 35 years. You know, it's, uh, even I'm at home watching Wolf Blitzer on the Situation Room, and, and now I'm even getting scared. You know, it's, uh, and I think to myself, damn, if my name was Wolf, I would not grow a beard. <laughs> That would be the first thing I wouldn't do. They, um, so many things to worry about. They, um, dur during an economic decline, uh, economic activity in a recession declines by about 2.5%, not 40%, about 2.5%. Uh, unemployment rises by about 2%. Uh, if unemployed, the average tenure unemployed is about six weeks. Now, if that's you, that's not good. But it's not forever. I mean, six weeks at home, that's about how long it takes to get really good at Guitar Hero. You know, it's, um, this, could, uh, this could work out for you. They, uh, I have a friend that lost his job, and whenever I say that, he always contradicts me. He always goes, I didn't lose my job. I know where my job is. I, uh, they just won't let me back in the building. You know, it's a whole different, whole different thing. Um, and we've had two recessions uh, in the last 25 years before this, with the early 90s and the dot-com bust of 2000, 2001. Now, you remember this. Uh, this is when everybody wanted to buy stocks. Everybody wanted to buy those dot-com internet stocks. Remember, these were companies with no cash flow, no earnings, no assets. Who knew? And um, they uh, don't know why that didn't work out better. So uh, they, uh, and of course, the recession is all the way you spin it, right? If you go to, if you're a banker and you go to someone's house and you knock on the door and, and you tell them, hey, I'm here to foreclose. Well, those people are pretty angry. But if you go same banker, you go to the house, you knock on the door, and you say, hey, you're going camping. See, that's a really a nice, uh, much nicer approach. They, um, they, uh, forever. And um, the, uh, <laughs> recessions always end, and the economy always rises to a higher plateau. In the last year, I've heard more and more times the four most dangerous words in finance, this time it's different, and it's never different. There's a lot of similarities in all these cycles. Uh, we talk about the stimulus, and everybody, of course, focuses on President Obama's uh, $790 billion stimulus in January. But if you can drop back about 18 months or 20 months, you see it was actually a three-pronged st stimulus. The first was the spring of 2008, where President Bush gave us the $170 billion tax rebate. Now, most of us either made too much money to get anything or you've still got like a $35 check with a, on a magnet with your refrigerator or something like that. But, but that was $170 billion. That was the, the opening salvo. Uh, President Bush, this is, this is the man that met the head of France and said, hey, you know why you don't have much of an economy? <laughs> you don't even have a word for entrepreneur. <laughs> it's, a, it's a French word. It's, um, so, God help us. They, um, they, they, <laughs> Then in the fall of 2008, oil prices collapsed, and we saw prices of the pump drop from four bucks to two bucks. We think that was the equivalent of about a $350 billion uh, stimulus into the economy. And then finally, of course, the economic stimulus plan in January. Uh, the other thing that's happening is the economic news is getting better. Not necessarily because the economy is getting better, but suddenly it's in everybody's best interest to roll out the good news rather than roll out the bad news. Like right now, you're much more likely to hear a story about two guys that get their job back at a Chicago bolt plant somewhere like that.